say it already. The but, alien origin? Yeah, yeah, you said you, 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 I don't know what we could do about that. Uh, my, you know, if this, I would almost hope it is at some point because if this is the Chinese or the Russians or someone's invented a capability that we can't monitor, that sounds like a big problem. A lot of people say, well, maybe it's Russia or China. But some of the things that have been publicly talked about, we know for a fact from the intelligence community, we have high confidence that things like transmedium properties and hypers uh, hypersonic speed, meaning vehicles that go at five times the speed of sound or Mach 5, uh, uh, Russia and China clearly didn't have those in 2004 when some of these things um, uh, were cited and recorded. And there very clearly are now hundreds of unexplained sightings, meaning that there's no natural phenomenon involved, there's no visual disturbance, it's not clutter or debris or birds or anything else, but uh, objects that uh, demonstrate technologies that seem to defy the law of physics and capabilities that we don't have as the world's superpower. On today's episode of The Lucid Lens, I want to focus on the conflicting messaging and statements we're getting from the government uh, when it comes to the UAP topic. Congress seems, how should I say this, uh, conflicted on how to talk about UAP. On one hand, we have a representative, a Gang of Eight member, saying Congress isn't investigating UAP incursions over military airspace. Uh, another saying they haven't even looked into David Grush's claims while simultaneously other senators and representatives are saying it's a serious issue that UAP should be among our top priorities and we need more hearings because we don't have all the facts. After last year's UAP shootdown in February, we had multiple Congress members state that we've been seeing these objects for a very long time. Former Director of National Intelligence John Radcliffe says that UAP far outstrip our capabilities as the world's superpower and we know they don't belong to Russia or China. So what the hell's going on? Let's go. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. Greetings, beautiful people, you marvelous citizens of the planet Earth, and welcome to the Lucid Lens. I'm just some dude in my home office talking about what should be the biggest story of the millennium. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you enjoy the content, leave a thumbs up. But most of all, I want to know what your thoughts, theories, opinions, and questions are. So let's get some discussion going in the comments. All right. So this episode, I want to focus on what the hell is going on in Congress and the government at large, because they seem to be all over the place right now. And I'm going to be pulling together a lot of quotes from Ask a Poll from over the past month, you know, how this ties into the incursions over the Langley Air Force Base and the hearing we had with Senate Armed Service Committee. We're going to revisit some Congress members' um, reactions to the briefing they received after the February shootdowns last year. You know, remind folks uh, what the former Director of National Intelligence, John Radcliffe, stated, as well as the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So Matt Laszlo, man on the streets, getting the dirt in Washington from all of our favorite characters in this saga. And we keep getting a bit of a mixed bag, uh, depending on which member of Congress he asks about UAPs. For instance, we have Jim Hines, who's on the House Intel Committee, Gang of Eight member, laughing at the mere mention of UAPs. I know UAPs are on really the radar. But how much, how much are UASs? Because we're hearing from a lot of senators, Kane complaining about uh, over Langley, Mark Warner just brought it up to what's a UAS? Uh, unmanned aerial systems. Systems? Yeah, I mean they. Um, Mark Kelly says it's drones that were. Wait, we're not talking about extraterrestrial stuff here. UAS? No, no, no. Oh, okay. what I'm is sorry, buzzing? Said, you, you what? Said UAP, oh, so I said I know you guys aren't <laughs> investigating <laughs> that, but right. I mean, we're hearing complaints of a persistent problem of invasion of U.S. airspace above sensitive military nuclear sites. A lot of senators are bringing this up regularly. Yeah, it's, always, it's, it's yeah. always a risk. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Wait a minute. But I'm, how much, I'm just a bank venture. What how much are you investigating that? Or um, Congress isn't investigating. It's a security risk, right? It's a, it's a tactical security risk. He doesn't even know what a UAS is, an unmanned aerial system. And then he goes on to say Congress isn't even investigating it. It's just a security risk. Well, Representative Hines, uh, it's a bit more than a risk. It seems that our security has, in fact, been breached. My colleagues and I on this committee have recently discussed installation security from, with respect to drone threats at bases in the United States, recognizing that we're in an unclassified setting. What can you tell me about 
how NORTHCOM is addressing this issue and with, with what partners are you working this challenge? Senator, uh, NORTHCOM, uh, as part of my 90-day uh, assessment, is, uh, to tell the truth, the uh, counter UAS uh, mission has dominated that so far in the first month. Uh, of course, I knew it was an issue coming from a, another combatant command where uh, we, we faced that threat in a very different way because of the environment, uh, but I wasn't uh, prepared for the number of occur incursions that I see. Uh, I've gone into the uh, um, events at uh, Joint Base Langley Eustis, and I'm using that as a uh, the, the centerpiece of my 90-day assessment to see where NORAD and NORTHCOM can and should do more as this uh, merging uh, capability outstrips the operational framework that we have to address it. So this is NORAD Commander General Gregory M. Gio testifying in front of the Senate Armed Services Committee. He seems a bit overwhelmed and seemingly unprepared to deal with protecting our own military bases within our sovereign borders. These aren't overseas. This is Langley's here. And, and you know what? <laughs> I would say that it seems like Congress is, in fact, interested in investigating these incursions. Marco Rubio certainly seems concerned. Uh, Kane uh, complains about it over Langley. Like, they just say there's, there's Mark Kelly was complaining about it last week, this persistent problem of intrusion over U.S. airspace. Yeah, they, they, they're hungry. It's a very serious problem. People always want to immediately default to the you know, aliens yeah. and extraterrestrial. But the fact of the matter is that there are things flying overhead in our country that aren't supposed to be there and that are not ours. Yeah be among our highest priorities and that's really what we're trying to address here yeah among our highest priorities absolutely chair of house oversight glenn grothman believes we need more hearings because we don't have all the facts yet meanwhile minority leader and gang of eight member hakeem jeffries says he hasn't even looked into whistleblower david grush's claims i mean are you kidding me <laughs> you see a trend here no it is a bit muddy isn't it let's see if i can add some additional context so let's take a quick look at the most powerful and informed members of the House and Senate, the Gang of Eight. So in the 118th Congress, the Gang of Eight is made up of the eight most powerful people in Congress from the Senate and the House. On the House Committee of Intelligence, we've got Michael Turner and Jim Hines. And we know what their stance is. Michael Turner largely opposed the UAP amendment last year. And we just heard from Jim Hines. And these people should be quite informed on the matter. But then we go over to the Senate intel, Mark Warner and Marco Rubio, and they have been very outspoken about the seriousness of the UAP subject. So we've got a very big discrepancy between House intel and Senate intel, and they both should be pretty well read in. Senate intel maybe more so. Then we go to these other members. we got the Speaker of the House and the Minority Leader from the House, Mike Johnson and Hakeem Jeffries. And we kind of know where they sit. They both seem sort of opposed. Mike Johnson may be potentially neutral, but Hakeem Jeffries apparently hasn't even looked into David Grush. And then we go to the Senate, also pretty split. We have Chuck Schumer, who sponsored the UAP Disclosure Act, and Mitch McConnell, who was reportedly recruited to oppose it. And then we have to remember the UAP Disclosure Act was unanimously supported by the Senate. It wasn't until reconciliation in the House that the bill became compromised. But then we've got the UAP caucus in the House, who they just seem hungry to attack the issue on their own terms. But they need approval of House uh, leadership to hold another hearing in Washington. And we know how you know, those are in the works from everyone is discussing that. And uh, Grothman says... They're, they're hoping to get one soon. And while we were all pretty hopeful another hearing would happen earlier in the year, uh, they do still seem confident it will at least happen before the election. I wonder if the gutting of the UAP Disclosure Act has had any impact on the uh, timing of Congress holding the next hearing, but without knowing what's going on behind the scenes, you know, Dobbser could be an issue. We, we really just don't know. We're kind of just guessing. All, all we can do at this point is speculate. We know one's on the horizon. We know people are working on it, so we just have to be patient. Um, and in the meantime, we're just going to have to continue to get wildly different takes from members of Congress on how important the issue really is. Although continued incursions um, in our sovereign airspace seems pretty important to me. But regardless of what this stuff is flying around restricted airspace, it should be a bigger priority, at least in the same conversation as conflicts that are happening across the other side of the world right now. I mean, and I don't mean to minimize the impact and the significance of those conflicts, 
you know, they could, they could, you know, spill into something even bigger. But this is stuff that's happening within the country, as well as in our military training ranges. Could be other countries. What we know that UAP, things that are truly classified as UAP, are not known actors. So definitely should be a bigger discussion. So this brings us to the conflicting messages and position from the executive side between Arrow, the Joint Chiefs, and former Director of National Intelligence John Radcliffe. So let's take a quick listen to, to what Radcliffe said back in 2021. The number of sightings, they're far greater than have been publicly disclosed before. The number of sightings and recordings that have been picked up by what we call multiple sensors, that is visual, radar, ISR, satellite. And when you have multiple sensors under... Um, uh, conditions where we see UAPs, um, it explains away a lot of the things like visual disturbances or uh, things like that. A lot of people say, well, maybe it's Russia or China. But some of the things that have been publicly talked about, we know for a fact from the intelligence community, we have high confidence that things like transmedium properties and hyper, uh, hypersonic speed, meaning vehicles that go at five times the speed of sound or Mach 5. Uh, uh, Russia and China clearly didn't have those in 2004, when some of these things um, uh, were cited and recorded. And there very clearly are now hundreds of unexplained sightings, meaning that there's no natural phenomenon involved, there's no visual disturbance, it's not clutter or debris or birds or anything else, but uh, objects that uh, demonstrate technologies that seem to defy the law of physics and capabilities that we don't have as the world's superpower. And he clearly stated that these objects that seem to defy the known laws of physics far surpass our level of technology is the world's superpower, and we know they're not from Russia or China. And don't forget the recent FOIA from the Joint Chiefs of Staff memo that went out last year to all military commands, mandating a reporting structure and defining the qualifications of what gets classified as a UAP. So we've gotten confirmation from the executive side that these UAP are in fact craft of unknown origin, possessing technology beyond our capability which don't belong to any known nations on earth. They're outright you know, going right to the edge and effectively saying they are from a non-human intelligence without actually saying it. So with all this in mind, let's revisit the reaction and statements from some Congress members after the classified briefing, which took place after the February UAP shootdowns in 2023. But this is certainly a very serious conversation and look, the President of the United States needs to get in front of the American public tonight and explain to them what we know. The American people need and deserve to know more. Uh, what we know so far is that the first uh, balloon was a Chinese spy balloon. Uh, it was very different in nature than the other three objects that were shot down, and it was different in how it moved. Many people, intentionally or otherwise, have been given the impression that a couple of weeks ago our skies were clear and then all of a sudden we have spy balloons and other identified, unidentified flying objects raining down on us like confetti. That is not accurate. These objects have been flying over us for years, many years. We've known about those objects for many years. Except for the Chinese spy balloon, we don't know what they are. What's different about the last two weeks is that we've started shooting them down. We need some more transparency. I understand the need for, for national security secrets, but uh, now that this cow is out of the barn, uh, the President and the Director of National Intelligence needs to address it. Uh, they need to explain to the American people if they know, and I'm not sure they know, if they know they're not telling us, uh, what these things are, who put them up there, and do they pose a threat to the American people, and if the answer is no, how do they know that? Well, these are not the first time we've cited unidentified objects over U.S. airspace. It's just the first time we shoot them down. That We know what the spy balloon was from China, so put that one aside. The other three instances, as they are described, both publicly and in there, are not new. I mean, we've heard the exact same description in hundreds of cases, dozens this year alone. So observing unidentified objects over U.S. airspace, particularly over sensitive areas of the country, is not new. 
What we heard in there described, uh, and what we've heard publicly described, sounds just like the stories we've heard repeatedly. The most important question we have to answer now is what are these things, who sent them here, and what are they doing here? And the only way you're going to get answers to that is not just to retrieve the, whatever's left of them, but to understand how it compares to the hundreds of other similar cases. Because what, what bothers me the most is everyone's talk, acting like this is the first time we've ever seen these things, and so we reacted that way. No, it isn't. We've had hundreds and hundreds of cases uh, reported by military personnel. We've been talking about it for years. And there's a process now that's been set up to analyze these. And this data should be a part of that process immediately, not a year from now, not six months from now, right away, so we can cross compare it to those previous instances and maybe begin to get some answers faster than we would otherwise. So what's new is that, um, that, that they were shot down, which is extraordinary because not one, we, we've never shot down anything in 65 years of NORAD. And over one weekend, they shot down three things. The alien origin? I don't know what we could do about that. Uh, my, you know, if this, I would almost hope it is at some point because if this is the Chinese or the Russians or someone's invented a capability that we can't monitor, that sounds like a big problem. So with everything in mind, what is, you know, uh, gets classified as a UAP, we've been seeing these objects for a long time. It's the same stuff people have been reporting for years. So what does the public actually know about these shoot downs? We know the object shot down in northern Canadian territory of Yukon was described as cylindrical in shape. The third object over Lake Huron was shaped like an octagon, hovered at an altitude of 20,000 feet, and the first missile shot at the object missed. U.S. pilots who tracked the object over Alaska said the object interfered with their sensors, that it had no form of visual propulsion, and could, they could not explain how it was staying in the air at 40,000 feet. It was not similar in shape or size to the balloon, which was identified. And the National Security uh, Council coordinator, John Kirby, stated, we are calling it an object because that's the best description. Taking all this into account and remembering that John Radcliffe said there's many more cases the public doesn't know about. I mean, are we still having these objects just floating across? Are these incursions still happening? I mean, obviously we know they're happening in Langley, and we're, our pilots are still interacting and, and, and encountering them off the coasts. Did, so did they just stop shooting them down or did they just stop reporting it? I mean, that, that's the question the public needs to be hounding them on. And uh, I'm sorry, but our, our, our journalists are letting everyone down by not following this up. And I even bring in up the fact that, you know, Arrow just recently tried to shove the uh, England Air Force Base UAP under the rug which was quickly called out by Matt Gates as being incomplete and not reflecting all the information he was shown, including pictures from the pilot and radar signatures. Remember, the pilot uh, and the radar uh, reported a diamond formation of craft, while Arrow said with I mean, considerable confidence, well, I, th I think that was the word they used, <laughs> they didn't even seem confident in their own report, that it was a single balloon, a lighting balloon or of some, some sort. And they expect people to believe this crap? I mean, I don't know if they do. It just seems like it's... There's not a lot of effort put into their their uh, dispersal of this information. So, so what is the takeaway from all this? Well, believe it or not, there's some obvious differing of opinion. And like we all thought, some want this out. Some want to show it under the rug for reasons that we can only speculate on. But at the core of everything... Remember this, when something is designated as a UAP, it is something that exceeds all known performance envelopes and it's not a misidentification of something. We've had confirmation backed by sensor data that these UAP are objects that far exceed our capability. We know that those objects don't belong to China or Russia. Some stuff does, sure, but if it's classified as a UAP, we know it doesn't. So don't forget this when uh, you, you, know, you get discouraged or when the debunkers are trying to downplay the significance of everything that's been stated publicly already. These officials that are in the know and who want more transparency are going right up to the line of what they can say publicly without making you know, definitive declarations of a certain origin. They're asking us to fill in the blanks and read between the lines because... This stuff is still sitting under levels of classification that they can't breach yet. So you know, I know, I know it seems like nothing major has dropped recently, but you know, trust me, this issue is still hot on the minds of uh, many people in the government and military. Uh, and I think those on the inside 
they must know that they need to move things forward pretty quickly because they're going to soon lose control of the narrative as, you know, capabilities in the public and private sector are going to start to uncover things on their own, right? And without the approval of government and other nations might decide to take the lead. Rumors are suggesting that, you know, China may in fact be considering disclosing what they know. So yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, will catastrophic disclosure take the government by surprise? Can they thwart off public discoveries or, or disclosures from other nations before they get their act together? Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think, and I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs>